it's Erin and Simon with Assets and Arbitrage. Um, for this show, we do want to do a bit of clarification. I've been getting some emails and stuff. Um, first things first, Simon Family Investment Ventures, we do have life insurance. So we don't see anything wrong with life insurance. Again, our lifestyle show is about a permissionless, free life. We like to be free range, whatever is the most easily accessible, whichever we don't have to ask permission for, that's the route we tend to move towards. So we just want to kind of show you how we see things like life insurance. So we had a family member very close to us. She had started her life insurance policy in 2006. Um, she had gotten really sick in 2021 in May and the life insurance policy lapsed. She passed away in September. The money that she put in from 2006 to 2021, even though she paid it faithfully and then it lapsed, she got none of that when she actually passed away. So the idea is that we are giving our wealth every single month faithfully to a third party to hold for us just in case something happens. They're getting rich on the wealth that you're paying in every single month when you really should be holding your own wealth. And I'm not saying that to not have life insurance. We're saying maybe have a basic policy that's not hard for you to lapse because when money gets tight, what's the first bill that goes? Oh, that want to be first, most definitely. And for African Americans who have high blood pressure, diabetes, gout, and all the things that we're predisposed to, those premiums are like car note, nice car note high, right? Like the deluxe Cadillac car note high. So when money gets tight, that's the first to go. So all we're saying is, let's look at this in different ways. Yeah, it's it basically, we're just saying diversify your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, we're the type of people with our lifestyle, we're kind of off the grid, yeah. right? So yeah. if something happens to me tomorrow, we got, we got that duffel bag of silver that you can go cash in if you need the money. You know, because if from a life insurance uh, standard... If I die tomorrow, you're going to have to get a doctor here in Mexico, mm -hmm. sign off on my death certificate. You're going to have to send that back to the company, and then they're going to have to okay it, right? And that's a lot to be doing when you're, when you're trying to... When you're grieving. When you're grieving. So, you know, we have the life insurance, but we have that alternate stuff that you can touch right now if you need it with the Bitcoin. You know, if you need something, you can touch it right now. You don't have to ask anybody. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get any permission, right verification. It's, it's yours right now so that you can use it as you need it. So, uh, you know, we weren't saying don't do life insurance. And I misspoke on the other um, on the last <clears throat> on the last video because uh, the problems we were having was with a death benefit, not the life which insurance. comes with when you like work, uh, have a union job, um, not the actual life insurance company. Now, I do want to say when I said I got the life insurance in three to five business days, that was after the 10 days that the body couldn't figure out how to get to the crematorium. Then there was another 10 days, because this is during COVID, that the coroner or the forensic pathologist or whoever was able to come up with the death certificate. It took over a month to even be able to apply for the life insurance because, like he said, of the process the body had to go through before. And it was COVID. So death certificates were taking way longer than normal because, and my father didn't pass away from COVID. It just happened at the time of COVID. He was elderly. But that, these are the things we're talking about, right? Like if you needed the money within that 30, 35 days, there's nothing you can really do about it. There's nothing else for you to touch. You're seeing if you could apply for a payday loan. Family members are trying to come in out of town and stay at your house. You know, you have all of these nuances that are happening during the time. Of, and when I say tragedy, I think it's tragic when anyone dies. But during a, a, a very sad um, time when you're grieving. And you know what else happens is it takes that long to get the life insurance, but the uh, Social Security retirement benefit stops, stops immediately. immediately. So then if you're yep. used to having a certain amount of income per month, it's gone. It's gone. Right. So then it's like, damn, 
I need I need that life insurance to supplement the income that's now gone. That's well, correct. now it's going to take this amount of time. Where if you got that, you know, that digital asset mm-hmm. on standby, you say, okay, I can get I need I can get what I need right now, and we can take the time and wait for the life insurance process. That's absolutely correct. My father passed away on the twenty fifth of the month. His pension on the first. He never received it. My mom never received it. And she surely didn't get his money on the 15th because he had passed away on the 25th. Yeah. So that month was tight for her and we had to supplement. So the the idea is, and this is where the GoFundMes come from, right? Mm-hmm. These companies basically exploit desperation and poverty. That's all the life insurance company is. It's a legitimate casino, right? So understand, no, let's let's talk about that, right? House always wins. You have a few winners. You have people where the life insurance is paid out because they did what they were supposed to do all the way through. And you got to remember, my parents are baby boomers. So his life insurance just came out of his paycheck. He didn't even think about it. For people nowadays where you have these 1099 jobs, there are no benefits, Right. If you're going to do life insurance, you are doing life insurance out of pocket. It's your consistency and your discipline where you're going to have to pay that premium every single month until the time comes for when you need it. There are so many people who don't make it to that point. It lapses and whatever they paid in all of that time, that money belongs to the life insurance company who's getting rich off of you. So all we're saying is with that same mindset, right, instead of relying on a third party to take care of you just in case something happens, take care of yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe have a a term life insurance policy where, like we said, the premium is very basic premium. It's good to have maybe $100,000, maybe $50,000, maybe $20,000. But whatever you would have paid for a real premium, you take that money for yourself Pay it like a saint into your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, whatever you're paying it into. If you don't pay one month, the money's still there. And that's all we're saying. Your wealth is still there with you. You don't lose all of it. And and one of the things I did, not as a maybe life insurance, but for the family, is we we work with um, we invested in the Sun Exchange. The Sun Exchange, yeah. Right. So that's just you know, it's just a company out in South Africa, Mm -hmm. and you buy. you buy solar panels, mm-hmm. they put them on, you know, their businesses, and you're paid the excess in money Bitcoin. in Bitcoin. And it's a 20-year contract, right? You buy the panels outright up front, mm-hmm. and it goes for 20 years. And then in 20 years, you could re-negotiate um, the contract, or you could cash out. But it's just something I put to the side so that if something happens to me, the kids and my wife have it. And mm-hmm. it's a, it, ha- it has its own wallet. So... Those are things. I do little things like that, you know, that you just set it aside, like set it and forget it. And it's there. And we do the swan Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, that's the You know, where they take Mm -hmm. they take money out once a week Mm -hmm. and put it into a wallet Mm -hmm. and you just set it and forget it. And, you know, what we have done is we set it up to the point where we have some that if we need to use, we can use. Um, then you have that long term that's just put away yeah. for the family mm-hmm. for some if something happens. So you know that's our form of life insurance. Um, it's supplemental. Just supplemental. Mm-hmm. Um, we wasn't you know we wasn't coming after the life insurance people. <laughs> no, I don't, no, no. My prime America people, man, don't come for me. <laughs> don't come for me. I, my, my bad. But you know we're just explaining our experience because it happened back to back. You know, yeah, it did. Her father died. Yeah. My mother died. And it was a fight to get that life insurance when if you put it away in some other right. assets, right. You, you know, you couldn't even, you don't have to fight like that. I mean, when my mother died, <clears throat> she, where she lived at, as soon as they found out she died, they went and changed the locks. On your, that night. That, like that, right, that right there. And you couldn't even get in there. You can access and then the it then, then it becomes a whole thing right there. Like, okay, we can't even get in there and get her stuff. And can't do anything. It, it, it becomes a legal process. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, um, and she was an older, like she's a baby boomer. So she was one of the people who liked to keep a whole bunch of cash in the house and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, and then they just lock it. They just lock the house down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you want to have stuff that you could be able to get access to right if now. necessary. Mm-hmm. And and not ask anybody, not ask can anybody, I have this? Hey, can I go in here and see about her things? Mm-hmm. No, you cannot. Okay. 
So, and then that's just where you are in that mm-hmm. process. Where if, you know, you got the stuff ready, like I said, I tell her, I make a joke. I say, if something happened to me, don't even tell nobody. Because you got it already set up where you, you ain't got to tell nobody. But, you know. Chief, but I dig- if you're watching, come but, get your friend. But I digress. I digress. <laughs> no, but we really wanted to just clarify that because we, we had some people who weren't happy about Simon Family Investment Ventures. We're parents of four boys. We have life insurance, right? I have a very basic plan for us. But... The majority of our wealth is with us. It is not with a third party. I'm going to tell you that now, Mm -hmm. right? If I need to touch a large amount of capital, I can right now. If I need just a little bit of money, I can right now. I don't have to fill out an application. I don't have to mail anything off. I don't have to call anybody on the phone. I go right on the iPad or right on the cell phone and do whatever it is that needs to be done in the best interest of our family. I know you guys love the life insurance and the idea of it because it was supposed to um, the wealth gap. It was supposed to help supplement the wealth gap. But just kind of put in the context that the life insurance companies are not working in your self-interest. They're working in their own. So we have to kind of run with that. Like, yes, this is a utility. I get it's a tool. But at the end of the day, you're in this to make money. You're not in this to make sure that my family is okay when I'm no longer here. And remember, one of the, the slogans of Bitcoin is be your own bank. bank. And yeah. that's life insurance. It, it, it's, it's technically a bank. Simpler to a bank. <laughs> yeah. So be your own bank. Mm-hmm. Um, ha- have your, um, your affairs in order. There's nothing wrong with having it, but have it to where the people can get to it, mm-hmm. right? And because you need it right then. If you need it right then and the people in the grieving process, you don't want to go through all this paperwork. Right. You just want to be able to get what you need. It, it could be just as simply as getting what you need to pay a mortgage, pay a rent, yep. pay the light bill. Right. Like, I don't want to have to go through you, wait for you. Do, so that's all we were saying. It, it's, it's really building on the bigger mm-hmm. theme of be your own bank, right? right? You know, right. you are your own bank. Right. And again, you have easily accessible um wallets to choose from in the process of waiting for the death certificate in the process of trying to get the life insurance and like i said once i got to that point it took three to five days but it took 35 days for me to get to that point um just okay. due to it was crazy right nobody knew covid was going to happen mm-hmm. so if, if anything outside of covid happened to a love uh, a loved one you were just stuck in that weird odd world ending cycle of well, you got to wait for this we don't know what to do we have new protocols in place and so on and so forth so it took significantly longer i can't tell you guys how many gofundmes come across my poor facebook feed mm-hmm. on a daily basis and we're talking for people in their 40s and 50s we're not even talking about elderly yeah. people so they have small children a lot of the times um and i hate to say it but it's it's always a black man, right? It's it's rarely a woman. It's usually a 40 to 50, maybe 60 year old black man who has a family. He just, he worked two jobs or whatever the story is. And you have to contribute the money to the GoFundMe because there was no life insurance. There was no crypto. There was no savings. It was just enough to get by. And, you know, I just want to branch off on the be your own bank. If you're going to be your own bank, mm-hmm. You gotta have your family informed. Oh they, yes, they have to know the keys. Mm-hmm. They have to know where it's at. They have to know how to access it, right? So you have to have them informed. Um, you know, hey, this is this, this this in this wallet. This is in this wallet. Here's my Nano Ledger X. Mm-hmm. You know, have a safe for something like that, um, because if not. It's just gone forever, right? It, you run say? into the same thing yeah. and the apartment's well, locked and we can't yeah. access anything what, in it. And What they say is 3,000, three, I'm sorry, 3 million Bitcoin, as they um, assume is I'm gone forever, forever, right? So you want to have, you got to have it. And for us, you know, because we have uh, children, <clears throat> my oldest son is the one who knows where the, uh, the crypto is kept. Mm-hmm. So if something happens to me, he knows. She knows, of course, right. but... You never know because we roll together a lot. All the time. And, you know, and uh, if something happened to both of us at the, the same time. The probability would be we would go at the same time. Right. right? So you got to know. You know, mm-hmm. I tell them this card is for this. You use it to do this. This you, this app, you can get the wallet here. So in being your own bank is a lot of responsibility. And, and, and um, 
That's why, you know, the third party, they, they, they try to... They exploit that. It, hey, we're going to take some of that... Um, that stress. That stress That responsibility. Off the obligation. Is off the headache. The nuances. We'll take care of that yeah, for you. You got to be They're your own exploiting bank. exploiting that. You got to be your own bank because every now and then I'll find some new exchange and buy some more crypto. And I'd be like, oh, man, I forgot. Or I got crypto on exchanges <clears throat> sometime that I forgot about. Mm -hmm. And I say, damn, I got to... And I keep a ledger. I write it down in the notes. And then if I get some more or I find a new exchange or something I like, I, I add to the notes just in case something happens to me. It won't just be sitting over there and nobody and it knows updates about. updates to our son's um, iCloud. Yep. So, two, right, as a mom, as a mommy, <laughs> um, it's important for you to show your children. First of all, I don't know what the old school mindset is, but even younger couples feel mm -hmm. like their kids wouldn't understand it. These kids play Roblox. They play Minecraft. They got virtual bucks, skins. Yes, teach yeah. We teach them. When he goes to buy crypto, he'll have the our two middle sons, the 14 and 11-year-old, sit down and purchase the crypto. Which, so they know how to use the exchanges. They know how to use the wallets. They know how to use the Nano Ledger. They don't, they don't even... We, we give them a, an allowance, I guess, but mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want any cash. They want virtual money. They want virtual money. Like, hey, can I get some Robux, Robux, Robux and um, the Nintendo? What is it called? The Nintendo Swift or something? Yeah, but he has some kind of money he uses on there. I had to buy them the car. And um, they don't want real money, so they're already in the mindset of using digital assets. Currency. That, anyway. That's this mm -hmm. how it go that's how it goes. For them, so that's why, even though it, it, you get like a lot of pushback from the older generation, but I'm telling you, the younger generation is yeah. coming, and that's that's just how they think. They think in digital currency. I don't want. I don't want. If I gave him a twenty dollar bill, he'd be like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" Right? <laughs> like, he, he wants. He wants some digital assets. Yeah, so, it does. You know that's that. But that's the good. That's the good mindset of the young kids coming up, and that you know. That's why we try to keep them informed and we teach them about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. They did uh, in class, mm -hmm. some of their homeschooling, mm -hmm. they, they developed in um, their own coin. The, yeah, they created their own coin, um, wrote their own white paper, yes. right? Just as a um, project to understand. To understand and, it better. And, but, the, but to me, the most important part of it was they developed a use case for it, mm -hmm. right? So they understand, like, hey, if you're going to have this coin, it needs a use case. So they developed a use case, of course, because of them. It's gaming, yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> and then, uh, But they wrote a nice little white paper, keep it simple. Yeah. And um, that was just a, like a school project we worked on for a couple weeks. And yeah, it just, just a few weeks. Yeah, just, but just to get the kids understanding. Because to them, um, because the younger Bitcoin looks like, um, like I don't get, like they understand it, but... They're into gaming, so mm -hmm. it's like we 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 rather have a gaming token or a gaming <laughs> coin or something like that. I want to buy some yeah. skins. Yeah, is something what like they that. So, do. so yeah, so but but yeah, but we're we're talking about these things because like with life insurance, you got your beneficiaries. It's the same thing with your crypto, right? Because our son knows exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get a lawyer involved and give him the keys because. You never know who you're really working with. I know, you know, in America, everybody thinks everybody's working above board. I trust no one. So, you know, you're the beneficiary. You know what you have to do for your brothers. We raised our son to be their brother's keeper. Yep. And that way, probate court doesn't have to get involved. Yes. Right? The estate is in a situation where this is going to be locked up in court forever because your parents just had so much assets and we have to figure out who the assets are going to go to. Our sons may be of the age where they have wives or ex-wives, God forbid, you know, just have like broken and fractured families where people are fighting for wealth that doesn't belong to them. You want to be those seven, eight, 10 steps ahead. Yep. You are in charge of this. When um, our middle sons get a little bit older, we're going to break it up. These are your keys. These are your keys. These are your keys. These are your keys. And we keep that in our will and we update it so that there's no. Yeah. Well, you have to update it because the way that our family is set up now. Mm -hmm. They're getting older. They're getting older. So um, my oldest son is 20. So let's say he goes out and gets married and has a, starts his own family. family. So I have to I'll have to alter it mm -hmm. because he has his family, but I still got to have something for the other three. the other three, right? Because if it goes 
to him and his family, then maybe the other three don't, don't get, get in. Just depending on how stuff you guys know yeah, how drama you know, shakes down. Yeah, you right? know how you know how you got work an out ambitious sometimes. wife and she's like, Y'all got money, your brothers don't need that. So like, you know, <laughs> ten years from now, yeah. maybe all three of them are married Man, and have their own all families. Four of them. And oh, then, you said ten years from now. Ten years, yeah, not ten. Because Tino's know. a baby, yeah. And so you would have to restructure it again. Okay, they have a family, leave some to this. And then as they get older, because we had talked about this before. You're supposed to go two generations ahead. Then we're going to start structuring it for their kids. Yeah, which we're will not be leaving our this for you anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. write you out. Yeah, we, and so this is for the <laughs> and grandkids. And for your children. Right. So, so, and that's important, right? Because the idea is that they're supposed to, and we're consciously raising our sons, mm-hmm. right? Let me say that one more time. I want y'all to write this down. You're consciously raising your children, right? You're not responding to whatever happens from day to day. You are strategically raising them. You're like, hey, this is the game plan. This is how we build our wealth. This is how we maintain our wealth. This is mm-hmm. how we protect the wealth. Mm-hmm. It's a three-layered um, scheme or blueprint that we utilize for our sons. So we're teaching them the same thing. When you get, um, and our oldest, our 20-year-old, he's really good about um, saving money and being disciplined. He gets that from personality, same personality as his father. He's cheap. I'm cheap. He's cheap. <laughs> now the eleven Google. year old, the eleven year old, I'm worried about him because he's got very expensive taste. So we'll have to take a very different approach. That's the one with the Robux. He's got a car lot and all sorts of other stuff on Roblox. So he's one we'll have to really work with to get him disciplined to put stuff to the side um, consistently in order to build. Right? He's going to want to spend versus accumulate and. As parents, or even as people, we have to be self-aware. If that's your trait, like, hmm, you know, when I get money, I like to, I like okay. to let go of it. You have to be self-aware of that mm-hmm. and try to put things in place like a swan Bitcoin, where that money comes out before I even see it goes right to Bitcoin. Yep, and I got it. Right? Let me get a sun trust because it's something that's long-term. I don't have to think about it. I know that it's going towards that. Um for those of you, let's just go into the, the sun trust real quick. Okay. They, um, you can buy a cell or you can buy a whole solar panel. It's 24 cells to a solar panel, right? Oh, man. I'm going to yeah, double yeah, check that yeah, for yeah, you yeah, guys, yeah, but yeah, I yeah, think yeah, it's 24 yeah, cells yeah, to a yeah, solar panel. Yeah, so you can yeah, buy yeah. however many cells you want or you can purchase an entire panel. These panels go to commercial buildings, right? Mm-hmm. This is not for residential homes. These go to commercial buildings, schools, nursing homes, um, malls, plazas, plazas. plazas. all of those different type of commercial um, buildings. And it's long term. It's a 20 year thing. So once you get involved with it, you don't have to think about it again. Um, so that's something you can just set it and forget it. That's what I like to call it. Swan Bitcoin, set it and forget it. Especially if you know um, your budget may be tighter, mm-hmm. where it's like, I can save. I just, it, things are tight, right? With everything going up in the U.S., car notes, cell phone bills, electricity, food. I, we saw how much the food costs yeah. there. It's, it's absolutely crazy. So um, Swan Bitcoin would be your best friend because you can set it and forget it. You can do a week. You can do biweekly. You can do monthly yep. with Swan Bitcoin. And their customer service, man, Reed is the best. I'm going to shout out Reed. Anytime you need anything, you just email him. He's on top of it. Uh, so they have a really good um, customer service as well should you need to utilize it. I just wanted to circle back around what mm-hmm. we were talking about, life insurance. Not even life insurance, but just leaving assets and stuff for Make your assets. family. Because because we both went through this recently, mm-hmm. um, her father very disciplined, yeah. <laughs> meticulous. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, as time goes on, he came on with dementia. So yeah. the things that started to slip started to slip, and then it became a whole like, damn, where did he put this? Where's this at? You know, because you assume like I'm I'm gonna have my mind together the whole time, and. You know, she she did a great job. She had to go back and, and you know, do the fact finding and find out where stuff mm-hmm. is kept. You know, we're talking about old school when you buy uh, stock. Oh, yeah. You he get still gets paper certificates, certificates. And you yeah. get dividend payments. And then, you know, yeah. you know how it goes uh, from the company changes hands. It gets sold off. So you got to figure out what company, what company. That was a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. So you always want to keep 
um, whoever, I would say whoever uh, your most responsible child, child is. We always say it yeah. doesn't have to be the oldest. Yeah, it doesn't it have is, to be the oldest. Ours just happens to be the oldest, right? But mm -hmm. our 14-year-old is very responsible as well. They're all responsible, but you know. again, you're consciously parenting. You have to know who your children are. Yeah, you have, you to, have to be honest about it, be right? Be honest about it. Um, I'm the youngest. I am my parents' most responsible child. And no, no shade, right? It's just that... I'm in the West Indies. We call it pot salt. Me, your hands are in everything like kids with bad manners. So my father loved it, right? Because he's like, oh, this is her right here. And when he started to lose it, I was pretty much on top of everything. It was just a few things I had to do, like the paper stocks, right? I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, my dad had a box of paper stocks from Ma Bell, 1985, Manhattan. And that company has changed hands 22 times. So like mm -hmm. those little itty bitty intricacies were a mess. Yeah. So you want to kind of raise your children, show them how to manage a household, how to budget a household, yeah. give them a little, we used to make them, do you remember what they used to do the budget, the monthly budgets? We used to make up yeah. stuff. Yeah. And they used to have to keep a, a ledger so that they can budget a little bit of money. Cause if you can't, if you can't manage a little bit of money, you surely cannot manage a, lot, a lot of money. You no. just can't. People think, oh, if I have more money, I'll... no, if you have more money, you just must spend more money. And you're going to have more debt and you're going to have more headaches and more people are going to be looking for you. Yes. So <laughs> these are all of the things that you want to consciously be aware of, especially if you have a family or if you're planning mm -hmm. to have a family. That's, that's perfect for people who don't even have children yet. Like, oh, OK, that's that's good to think about because they don't tell you that. When you're young and you're 20 years old, you just get married like we did. No one told us that. We had to stumble across it in our two decade long marriage. All of these little things because the baby boomers, let's be honest, I'm about to get some more right. angry emails. Boomer. Baby boomers had everything done for them. Right. Right? Yeah. You just went to work. They took everything they needed to out your paycheck, Social Security. You get that every month. You get a pension. We took that out. Um, like I said, my dad had um, stock that his company elected him into. Right. Right. So those stocks were going to come anyway because his company set that up for him. He didn't really have to. He was disciplined in the sense that he was really good with money. Right. I ended up marrying my father. Thank goodness. But um, no, because just imagine if he was like irresponsible or something and then I went and just kept the cycle going. Right. Um, but you just want to be in the mindset that in 2023, 2022, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. We have to do everything ourselves. That's where the whole be your own bank comes in because yeah. things aren't automated for us. Mm -hmm. We live in a revolution now where the majority of jobs out there in the market don't have any benefits. These people don't get health insurance, life insurance. Nothing gets taken out of their check. They're going to give you the whole shebang, but it's up to you to do the things you need to. Can you retire? There's no retirement coming out of your check. You're not paying in the Social Security. And, of course, we all know that Social Security may not even be there when people in our age bracket retire. Yeah. So you have to set these things up. And we'll have a whole show. He talks to me about it all the time. You're going to be 65 working? You're going to get up, get in your car, and drive to work every day? You're 65 years old? 1099? Like, I talk, I talk to people, certain people, you know, they may be, uh, you know, in their 50s, mm -hmm. pushing 60s. No retirement. And they, they don't have any... They don't have a plan of plan place. of retirement, mm -hmm. right? Um, I have a good friend that I work with, the chief. If you watch, shout him, out the chief. He's gonna be on the show, and he's gonna talk about he's getting ready to retire. And we, he's been we, planning. We, yeah, he's been planning. <laughs> we so were planning. firefighters together. He's planning his retirement. He's uh, planning on spending uh, some time in Mexico mm -hmm. or other countries, wherever they may be. And uh, we're going to have him on the show. We're going to talk uh, extensively about that. But we're getting to the point where people that age, mm -hmm. like, that's it. Because behind them, people don't have the type of jobs where you can retire from. You're not going to get those pensions. You're not going to get those payments coming to you. Mm -hmm. You can hang out in a golf, in a golf course resort. Mm -hmm. You can live in an active community, mm -hmm. right? Some of these people, well, the majority of them, unfortunately, just looking down the pike, you guys are going to have to live with um, children, family members. I mean, it's already getting tight with it's people tight. who are employed. 
So when we talk about things like holding on to your wealth and mm-hmm. you be your own life insurance company, or at least supplement it, yes. right? But we're talking to people who don't have life insurance as well. I know there's plenty of you guys out here watching this show who don't have a life insurance policy. Right. Whether you have issues where um, the premiums are just too high or you had it in the past and it lapsed and you just never got back on top of it. We are just showing you different options you can do in order to supplement the things you need long term. Another thing that we don't really think about, because I guess we're talking about death, but let's just come back a step. You know, when you're 20 and 30, you have all this energy. You can stay up 24 hours, turn around, go right to work, come home, cook for your children, you know, go coach a basketball game or go get your hair done or what have you. When you start to get 45, 55, the knees are creaking, the elbows hurt, the arthritis sets in. Are you healthy enough to continue working? Especially for those of you who have physical jobs or who have jobs where you must be on site. What plan do you have in place should you have a health crisis? Andrew, um, so with that, you have um, different platforms, you know, where you can stake your crypto mm-hmm. and get the interest payment, Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. You, you used to be able to do that. Remember people say, oh, you could just live off the interest, but because of treasury, um, the treasury bond... Because of the interest rate has went so low <laughs> that, that you out. can't even you can't even do that anymore. <laughs> that right? whole thing stressed him out, y'all. <laughs> but if you put, you, I mean, it, and I know people are funny about leaving crypto on exchanges mm-hmm. and stuff, and I get it. Um, but if you had, you know, whatever a certain amount of crypto on an exchange, then they send you an interest payment. We do that with BlockFi. Right. They send you the interest payment. They send me an email. Hey, your interest has been paid out. Mm-hmm. I say, oh, okay, that's nice. You know, passive income. Yeah, it's passive. It's like, oh, that's nice. So, you know, you have to, because of the way the world's going, you got to find alternate ways for your retirement, but basically just to get to the end of life, right? Because it, they have the reports mm-hmm. out there. You know, I have to fact check it. I, I, I go off the top of my head. I think it was 2034. Social Security will be done, and I think that's the... They're trying to prop it up. The retirement, and then that's the retire- a little... That's the pension. The pension, yeah, and then lady, later, I think in 2040-something, mm-hmm. uh, you know, double-check me on this, the uh, disability disability part will be gone, right? So Social Security is not going to be there as a retirement option for people in our age range and lower, right? So we have to be... We talked about chess the other day. Mm-hmm. You gotta gotta have your seven chess moves ahead. See where you're gonna be at. See what square you wanna be on. Like, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. In and the best it, interest of myself and or my family. Yep. Now I'm gonna hit you with one more statistic. In twenty fifty, black yep. wealth's gonna be zero. With the amount of student loans, black women are the most educated women in the in the country. You know what that means? It means black women have the most debt. Yeah, because of the student loans that you can't get rid of, you can't unload, and it just stays with you. Yeah, as they as they break it down, if you read the um, dissertation, they have it in subgroups. So black women as a subgroup, Mm -hmm. right, are the most educated and enrolled and enrolled in um, United States of America. Mm -hmm. But that means because of how student loan debt goes, they're also the most in debt. Most in debt. There's a, a wealth report that I have, uh, about 65 pages long. Pretty good read. It just gives you breaks down everything. It's very technical, though. Like, um, you making it sound short. It's very technical. It's very technical, but <laughs> they're saying the average black woman in America is worth minus. Minus. $11,000. We should say negative. N- okay, negative. Negative $11,000 so, because of the student loan situation. And, you know, and, and we don't want to go too long and we'll keep it short, you know, because in this new generation, um, you know, you got people like Google talking about you don't need a degree. You just We just know, need to know that you're competent. So there's a whole new wave coming where you may not have to go to school and take on all that debt to get a good job or a good profession. So, um, especially if you have a skill, yeah, if you a, have a, a technical skill, skill at that, skill. right? So, um, we are going to keep it short. We do want to keep this conversation yeah. going. We love the emails. That's why I want to clarify. We didn't want to make y'all mad. We just wanted you to look at it a different way. Right, right. Um, 
you know, they programmed us for generation after generation after generation to basically utilize a third party as our salvation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave that at that, right? Church, don't come for me. That's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about insurance companies. The banks say, I'm going to hold your money in our account. We're going to keep it safe for you. And when you want it, you just come up here and withdraw the money in their own self-interest. So, um, life insurance in their own self-interest. Health insurance is a different monster. We're not going to get into that. Okay, um, but we will talk about medical discovery in other countries like Cuba and Mexico on another show. Um, and that only really works when you're not, when you, when you don't have a severe illness. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if, if, if you're a type two diabetic and you just wanted to bring some of those, um, costs down, you know, metformin in Mexico is $2. Yep. Our son has seizures. So he takes Tegretol. That's a dollar 40 for a six week supply. Yep. It was, I think, over $800 when we lived in Florida. Little stuff like that. And these are the little things we do. Yeah, that, but that's the arbitrage right mm -hmm. there. Like, okay, so if we move a place where medication is cheaper, right. then that helps out the whole family because right. we can take the extra money that we have left and aggressively invest accumulate in assets. assets. Yep. Right? Accumulation, accumulation, accumulation. And again, we live by the 80 20 rule. 80% 80 of our income is invested in assets. It's accumulating assets. The other 20, we're free to do and live how we like. Um, I'm going to quote Nas by the time you can afford it, the car ain't that important. People think when they come into a whole bunch of money, it's going to be Fendi, Louis, diamond rings. No, 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 no. By the time you get to that point, you're like, nope, I got grandchildren. That's a, that's I got great grandchildren line. coming and I need to prepare for them, mm -hmm. which our forefathers didn't necessarily do for us. Right. So it's important that we're consciously raising those next generations and we're consciously supporting each other as a community by sharing this information. We love you guys, and um, we're so glad that you join us faithfully every single week. Uh -huh. um, we're going to see you guys on Monday. Keep emailing. Keep sending out the likes, the shares, the comments. We really appreciate y'all. And I swear, next show is going to be all him. I promise. I promise. Uh -huh. <laughs>